Two large storms will be impacting the United States over the next 10 days, bringing the return of some significant severe weather, including damaging winds, very large hail, and tornadoes. Additionally, very warm weather is on the horizon as summer is only a week away. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next 7 to 10 days. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country today. And actually, the weather's been pretty active over the last 24 hours. We've had a lot of rain and also even some severe weather, including severe weather that sparked up back over in the central and northern plains, which is an area that we are anticipating additional severe weather today and really over the next several days. Additionally, there is a weak low pressure system that is currently spinning over Missouri and Arkansas. This is actually responsible for over 8 to 10 inches of rain in parts of Texas over the last three days, additionally bringing one tornado just to the west of San Marcos, Texas a couple of nights ago. And this may bring a few isolated severe storms this afternoon to the Ohio Valley, but generally speaking, just some pulse pop-up thunderstorms with the potential for small hail and gusty winds should be the main concern in these areas. Now let's talk more about the weather pattern that'll be impacting the United States over the next 7 to 10 days to give you more of an idea of where we're going to be seeing these big storms and why. Beginning with what's happening right now, we have a large high pressure system that is currently in place back over in the southern plains in the four corner states, a weak low pressure system moving over the Ohio Valley, and then another low pressure system that is centered just off to the northwest and north of Montana, and this is actually going to help to amplify the threat of severe weather today across Montana and even Wyoming. And then as we go into tomorrow and as well as Sunday, the storm system will be moving off to the north into Canada. We may still see a little bit of severe weather on Sunday, mainly back over in the northern plains. High pressure will continue to dominate back over in the southern plains, which is going to build a lot of heat as we get closer to the beginning of summer. By next week, that is when things are going to start to get, I think, a little bit more interesting. We're going to have some troughing moving over the Rockies, which should should promote the threat of some severe weather, especially across the northern plains, the central plains, and the Midwest. I think this really ramps up Monday into Tuesday, and this could also lead to the threat of some mesoscale convective systems. We are entering that time of season where we start to see big lines of thunderstorms move across areas like the Midwest. I think we are going to see plenty of that over the next 7 to 10 days, especially during the work week next week, as we have multiple shortwave troughs that will move over the Rockies. And then by the end of the week, I think this active weather pattern will continue with multiple low pressure systems moving here across the Pacific Northwest and the Northern Plains, which should continue to lead to an elevated threat of severe weather, especially back over in the Northern Plains, Central Plains, Midwest, and the Ohio Valley. With all that said, I do think severe weather will continue to be a possibility, even back over in the Southern Plains. Just a lot of that will be based off of mesoscale features rather than large low pressure systems, which is something I think we're going to see fairly frequently across the Northern Plains and the Midwest here over the next week or two. Now let's go day by day with all of our upcoming severe weather events and we are going to begin with today which is Friday and believe it or not we actually have an enhanced risk of severe weather in place back over in Montana and a slight risk that goes from the high plains even back into the central plains also through Montana where all hazards of severe weather will be on the table and then a marginal threat that extends all the way back over into western Arkansas and also west Texas. Another thing I want to point out is that storms are possible anywhere in the light green today so almost the entire country could actually see pop-up thunderstorms including the Ohio Valley, South southeast and even over into southern New England. So for today, the biggest concerns will be damaging winds, which actually could be significant at times back over in Montana. May see an isolated wind gust exceed 80 miles per hour this afternoon. Very large hail is also going to be a big concern out of our initial supercells across Montana during the early to mid-afternoon hours, and that should continue into the very early evening. And then we also have an elevated tornado threat for Montana. There is a 5% tornado risk in place, and then a 2% tornado risk that goes back over into western Nebraska and north eastern Colorado. So again, the bulk of today's threat will be during the afternoon. There could be also a few storms during the evening hours. There is a chance of a live stream today, so make sure you are subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified if we do go live. And then on Saturday, the threat of severe weather will shift just a little bit to the east. We are talking again about the Great Plains and also into Montana, where additional severe weather will be a possibility. Another level 2 out of 5 slight risk in parts of Montana, back into Nebraska. And the main concerns for Saturday will be damaging winds in some large to very large hail, mainly in that yellow shaded area. There will also be a potential for an isolated tornado or two. And then as we go into Sunday, the threat of severe weather will continue across the Great Plains where more damaging winds, hail, and even a chance for a tornado or two will exist. This is, again, the beginning of a very active stretch of severe weather across the Great Plains. And then as we go into Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I fully expect severe weather will continue, especially across the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and the Central and Northern Plains. Now let's talk more about the timing for severe weather today today beginning
beginning with the Rockies, which we are expecting storms to fire up right around 2 to 3 o'clock Mountain Time across many areas in central Montana. And these storms will likely stay relatively discreet, and any storms that do stay discreet will be able to produce very large hail and also a chance of a tornado. May even have a storm back over in Wyoming this afternoon as well. By around 5 to 6 o'clock, these storms will continue to push to the east. I think our greatest tornado threat will be in the middle of the afternoon. And then around the evening hours, this will become more of a line of storms or a cluster of storms. It will not be very organized, but there could be a continuation of damaging winds, hail, and maybe a low tornado risk as these storms continue to push east during the late afternoon, evening hours, and then eventually into the very early overnight hours before these fizzle as they move back over into North Dakota. And then for tomorrow, we could actually have a repeat of what we're going to see today with a few more storms being possible. These will also be somewhat discreet as we go into tomorrow afternoon and evening across Montana, Wyoming, and also South Dakota, where damaging winds, hail, and a low tornado risk will exist. I definitely think the tornado threat both days will be pretty much the same. I think even tomorrow we could see a small little 5% somewhere back over in central or even southeastern Montana. And then back over in the central plains for today, there will be some scattered showers and thunderstorms that'll fire off near the Rockies, also across the Texas Panhandle. This will be mainly during the mid to late afternoon and early evening, where the biggest concern will be damaging winds in large hail, damaging wind threat more elevated back over in Wyoming, Nebraska, and Colorado, and then large hail more of an elevated threat down in the Texas Panhandle. And then eventually by the early evening hours, most of the storms in the southern plains will fizzle with daylight heating ending. And then we should still have a cluster of thunderstorms ongoing in Nebraska and northwestern Kansas during the late evening tonight, but it will likely fizzle by around midnight with only just some gusty winds remaining as it approaches areas back over near Kearney, Nebraska, for example. And then eventually into Saturday, there will be more scattered showers and thunderstorms out there here across the central plains. Really not a whole lot of organized activity here, just isolated damaging wind tail and maybe a spin up tornado being a possibility. And then on Sunday, there may be another chance for isolated severe weather, mainly back over in Colorado and Nebraska with damaging wind tail and a low tornado risk existing. Now, on top of all the severe weather that we're going to be seeing over the next couple of days, we are also anticipating a long stretch of severe storms. And one of the ways we can see this stretch of severe weather that is coming is looking at our supercell composite, which essentially takes a bunch of ingredients, puts it into one graphic and shows us where there could be a potential for supercell initiation if we were to have a cold front, a low pressure system, etc. So as we go throughout the weekend, we are expecting a fairly active stretch of severe weather to continue with at least isolated severe storms being a possibility. But by early next week, notice how we are going to start to see these valleys really increase, especially back over in the central and northern plains, which is an area that we are going to see low pressure systems ejecting over the Rocky Mountains, which should lead to a favorable corridor for at least some scattered severe weather. And even by Tuesday and Wednesday, all this energy is eventually going to move up into areas like the Midwest in the Ohio Valley, which is an area that I do personally think we are going to at least see a couple of rounds of severe weather between Tuesday and Thursday of next week. So definitely get ready if you're back over in the Midwest for an increasing threat of severe weather. And then by the end of next week, things start to get more uncertain. But I think this weather pattern is going to continue to stay very similar across the Northern Plains in the Midwest, where we are going to continue to see a favorable environment there for some severe weather, as long as we have low pressure systems that continue, which I do think will be a continuing concern. So to put this into more simplistic terms, this is the future radar for the next week or two, beginning with what's happening Saturday into Sunday, which again, we are expecting severe weather to continue to be a concern. And on Saturday, I think there will be some scattered severe weather across the board, maybe a little mesoscale convective system somewhere, which the GFS model is depicting one in Oklahoma, which again, if we get a mesoscale convective system, that's a line of thunderstorms with mainly a damaging wind threat. And as we go into Sunday, there will be a little bit more severe weather in pretty much the same areas that we are talking about over the next couple of days, back over, especially in the northern plains and as well as back through Montana where damaging wind tail and a low tornado risk will once again exist on Sunday. On Monday is I think when we're at least going to see our first of probably several mesoscale convective systems throughout the work week next week. Right now the GFS model is indicating at least some severe weather being a possibility from Nebraska back into Wisconsin with damaging wind tail and maybe even a few tornadoes being a possibility. There will also be a threat of severe weather once again across the northern plains back over into Montana as well. And then on Tuesday a more organized low pressure system will attempt to move over the Rockies, which should bring more severe weather on Tuesday across parts of the Central Plains, maybe back through the Midwest. On Wednesday is when I think we will likely have a more significant day of severe weather, but it's going to depend on how much moisture we get to pull off to the north and also our storm mode. But right now, the GFS model is indicating a low pressure system over Minnesota with some scattered to numerous severe weather being a possibility from the Great Lakes all the way back through the Southern Plains. And then as we go into Thursday and Friday, that storm system will eventually move out finally and then by Friday into Saturday that is where things start to
to become more uncertain, but I do think this active stretch of weather will continue, especially for those in the Midwest. But I think really right now, the biggest concern across the board will be the next few days from Montana back into Texas with scattered severe weather being a possibility, but definitely watch out for Wednesday and Thursday. I do think if we get a low pressure system like this that moves over the Rockies, we definitely could have one of our more significant severe weather events occur, at least for this time of the year across parts of the Midwest and then all the way back into the Southern Plains where all hazards of severe weather would be on the table. And another thing that we have to talk about is the temperatures over the next week or two. We are quickly approaching the beginning of astronomical summer and our temperatures are expected to stay above average for throughout the vast majority of next week. We are going to continue to have very strong southerly winds, especially once low pressure systems eject over the Rockies, which is going to pull a lot of heat out of the Gulf in addition to a lot of humidity, which all in all is just going to lead to very warm weather throughout most of next week. And we will probably see some record breaking temperatures, but at the bare minimum, above average temperatures are likely for most of the country. There's very few areas that will be dealing with the threat of below average temperatures. And even then, it's not going to be very below average for most of the country, even if we were to see below average temperatures. So get ready. It is going to be warm, I think, over the next week or two. These are some of the high temperatures that are forecasted for Saturday. And you'll notice that temperatures are all the way up into the low 90s as far north as South Dakota. We will also have some well above average temperatures continue back over in the southwest. And then along the east coast, there will be some 80s, maybe even a few 90s back as far north as Maryland. And then Wednesday of next week, we are going to start to see that warm air start to build, especially back over the Midwest and the Ohio Valley, which if we pair these temperatures with our storm systems that'll be coming in, in addition to the instability that we are going to have in these areas, we should at least see some level of organized severe weather as we go into Wednesday. The Cloud Prediction Center is also agreeing with this, that we are going to be seeing above average temperatures for pretty much the entire country throughout the middle of June. This is between Wednesday of next week all the way through Sunday of next weekend. So again, if you're in any of the darker shaded red regions that basically means you have a very high chance of seeing above average temperatures only the pacific northwest will be really one of the only areas that lucks out with at least somewhat below average temperatures over the next week or two but generally across the board get ready summer is coming in hot here over the next week or two and as always thank you all so much for watching today's forecast if you are new to the channel make sure to subscribe down below there's a low chance of a live stream later today and even tomorrow so make sure you click the bell icon so you're notified if we do go live if we don't have a live stream today there's a high chance that we'll have a video tomorrow but if we do not have a video for whatever reason tomorrow there will definitely be one on sunday so stay tuned and we'll see you guys all again in the next forecast or live stream